Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be explaining the differences between stock, expert, and ace crew qualifications so that you can see why they are so important and exactly how big of a difference you can expect in your gameplay. And trust me guys, they are big and extremely important. So never discount putting a little bit extra SL into your vehicle or just simply boosting up your crew stats. Now that being said, I will be doing this for both aircraft and tanks. Though of course, if you play naval, the few of you who do, you can easily transpose the lessons learned in this video into naval. So it's pretty much the same exact concept, but of course, transferred into naval. Naval crew is very similar to how ground forces crews work. So for the sake of this video, I decided to purchase a brand new crew slot, totally free of crew experience and any crew points put in whatsoever. So you can see exactly how basic this vehicle can be. I'm going to start off with BT5 because it's so simple to do. It's a very simple case to look at here. And one of the most popular things you're ever going to see in ground forces is the weapon reload so as you can see i'll just kind of go over this real briefly where it says total the maximum reload time for this vehicle is 3.77 seconds so if you do not have any crew points on this whatsoever if you do not have expert crew and ace crew qualifications you will have a 3.77 second reload. Whereas where it says on the top right there, on the right side, you can get it down to a 2.9 second reload, which is effectively shaving 0.8 seconds off, which at this BR isn't all too much, but when you get up to higher BRs with things like the IS-2, you are talking seconds taking off the reload. So with that said, once you export the vehicle, it essentially makes it so that you're putting three points into this, pretty much three points into everything. And I'll show you that right now. So get one more look at this. You have 11.2 seconds for the turret traverse, 3.8. And once I expert this crew, and thankfully because this is the BT-5, I do not need any level. But once you start getting past pretty much tier one, you will need to have a minimum level of crew. So you will have to devote some points into these before you can expert your crew. Let's go to expert it. And as you can see, now I've got a 3.51 second reload. And it, in that little kind of silver star, you can see the exact difference that an expert crew makes. It already shaved a quarter second reload off of this vehicle. You know what? Let's go show this on the IS-2. This is going to be an even bigger sort of change. So as you can see, you need a minimum crew level of 30 in order to upgrade this. So what I'll do is I'll purchase a bunch of these for 1000 GE, thankfully, because you guys are my followers and all that. Gaijin looks at that and they actually give me a little bit of GE per month. So I would not be able to do this without you guys. So I greatly appreciate that. So I'll just go ahead and upgrade pretty much everything right here. I think I needed like what, 30, I think. So I'll just go ahead and just upgrade everything to level two. As you can see, it's already decreasing what it will do once I collect on this apply button, it will decrease my total reload time between the weapon reload and also, of course, commander. This does impact it as well by 1.25 seconds, which is huge, very, very big. So as you can see, I've already dropped it down substantially. Let's go over to qualification, spend 200,000 SL on this, and it's dropped even further. I've already shaven 3.12 seconds off of the reload time. Not only that, but let's go to gunner targeting and the initial targeting speed of this vehicle was 10.12 degrees per second. Now, or rather it's 8.33 degrees per second. Now it's all the way up at 10.12. You're almost seeing a quarter increase just by simply increasing this stat by itself, increasing the commander stat, because again, this does impact every other stat, but more importantly, increasing the expert crew rating. And again, what that does is that it essentially makes it so that where you see that this has two points right here, now it adds an additional three. So essentially by putting this up to three, now I've got six points in total. Now, if we want to go a little bit further down the rabbit hole, which is exactly what I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and just upgrade this entirely because why not? 
Typically, targeting and range finding are among the cheapest things to upgrade. That and, of course, you have the radio operator and all that. But I want to go ahead and upgrade everything to about level 70 so that that way I can get this to ace crew qualifications. And more or less what you will see is that, and when it comes to logistical services, these are universal amongst every type of vehicle that can actually use this. So, for example, it's going to cover tank, air, and naval. But that said, I am very close to getting the level 30 or the level 70 that I want. So I'll go ahead and apply these right now. Go up to this, to qualification, and it costs 800 golden eagles to ace this crew. Now, the only time I've ever actually aced a crew without Golden Eagles, and I've rarely ever aced a crew with Golden Eagles, is with the SU-25K, which was a very easy vehicle to ace, which is definitely saying something. But as you can see here, this adds two to every single skill outside of the logistical services, the rank, and also the leadership so leadership just adds a total of up to 10 percent extra boost on everything which is extremely important and is also one of the reasons why it's the most expensive so i'll go ahead and click on ace and waste more of my silver or my uh, my golden eagles as you can see here my vehicle is now five seconds quicker to reload than it was previously it can get down to about 6.25 seconds, give or take, faster than its base, but it's still right now five seconds faster, which is tremendous. I'll just go ahead and do that. And as you can see, now I am at the fastest reload possible for an IS-7. So it's about six and a quarter seconds faster. So you're looking at anywhere, give or take around 25% faster reload speed. And this is pretty much universal, except if your vehicle uses an auto loader. So bear that in mind, but this is a huge difference and will oftentimes be the difference between life and death. It is extremely important. Now, when it comes to the turret traverse, it went all the way from 8.33 to around 11.9 degrees per second so almost three basically about three and a half degrees per second faster which is in and of itself about a 33 percent increase give or take just doing some rough math which is again tremendous and this difference only gets bigger as the turret rotation speed basically increases so for example if i were to do that with the bmp2m as you can see here with the crew go over to targeting it can go all the way from 35.7 at its base to 51 degrees per second, which is fantastic. So bear that in mind. There are some key differences here. Basically, if the overall pool is bigger, then the differences per point that you put in are much bigger. But essentially, what the expert and ace crew do is that it takes this, like how I'm adding one point right there it takes this and just kind of adds it to everything so this one point is pretty much again just what you can normally see with the uh, crew qualifications so instead of doing this you get three points and everything with the expert and then once you fully ace it you can get five points and there's a total of 10 points for every single stat that you have got five that i put in for the skill plus five given by the ace crew qualification or if you just want to go up to expert which is something i do a lot of the time you only get an extra three so basically Basically, you have eight out of the full 10 points that you can have. Now, if you're ever wondering what your top crew qualifications are, again, like I said, you can just simply go to the vehicle and just kind of see exactly what they might be. So, for example, let's go on to the T62 here. You can just kind of hover over it and you'll see the base and the top crew stats that you can have. So, again, it starts off at 11.96 goes up to 9.2 or if you want you can also go to the war thunder wiki which is a great source of information for all of these things one extremely important thing to bear in mind is that once you expert or ace a crew on a single vehicle you can transfer that vehicle let's say if i were to transfer this is2 to where the t55 amd1 is into this crew slot this crew rating the qualification will not transfer with it so if i were to do that and i were to spend another however many tens of thousands thousands of silver lion to transfer it over to this slot now it will no longer have that additional benefit of the crew rating so it'll just go down to whatever this is rated at so as you can see i've only got five points here that's it whereas this has 10 points in targeting i will now lose all of that unless i repurchase the qualification on this crew slot as well so bear that in mind it is extremely important when it comes to building a functional lineup in both ground and naval as well not as much 
damage in Air RB, but it can still factor in pretty heavily, depending on the sort of game modes that you play. Now, shifting over to aircraft, this is a little bit different than how tanks are in War Thunder, and I think the reason for that is because tanks came after aircraft did in war thunder and as a result they kind of made them a little bit more monetized if that makes any sense and as a result you have fewer crew skills that you have to worry about for aircraft but it does not mean that they are any less important because they are incredibly important to make sure that your aircraft is functioning well especially when it comes to top tier because the number one thing in my opinion is going to be about g tolerance now when it comes to this your aircraft crew skills are not going to impact anything here so your stat card will not be impacted by that whereas again if you are in a tank they are heavily impacted by the crew skills so for example again i got the is2 all the way down to a 20.8 second reload whereas with the mig 21 smt here my top speed is not going to be any different my turn time is not going to be effectively any different rate of climb none of that will be any different so it's very important to note when it comes to aircraft your various times with the exception of if you use the crew reload so go to logistical services here do the reload speed with the exception of that and you play air arcade it will not make any difference whatsoever but th again there are some very big differences that i'll go over now so i'll show you this now and this is kind of how i view aircraft crew skills but when it comes down to it when you are right at the beginning probably the most important things are going to be stamina and vitality more so vitality that way you do not get pilot sniped however as you go up the ranks and you get into faster vehicles g tolerance will become more and more important of course keen vision and awareness are always important but g tolerance is probably what's going to be your main focus as you level up your air crew now that being said as you can see here the base G tolerance, so what I have here on the MiG-21 SMT, is 4.5 Gs, peak Gs. So after that, your pilot starts to black out, which is a big, big problem when it comes to air battles at this BR. So I'll go ahead and show you this right now, exactly what that looks like, how quickly you can G out, or black out rather, and then I'll show you exactly what it looks like with a fully trained crew, so you can see exactly how big of a difference it is, because again, when it comes to tanks, it's very easy. You can just look at the stat card, you can say, wow, I've got a six and a quarter second better reload rate, and you can imagine that is a huge reload rate. You're going from two shots per uh, minute to almost three shots per minute which is phenomenal but when it comes to aircraft it's a bit more difficult to visualize so let's go ahead and get into a test drive and i'll show you exactly what i mean so I'll try to make this as even as possible because, of course, while this is not a purely scientific test, I want to make sure that there are as few variables as possible. So once I hit 1,000 kilometers per hour, I'm just going to shoot straight up with my afterburner flying and keep going until I'm out of... There you go. Lost control just below where the sun is. So as you can see, I mean, it's pretty quick and also a big factor in that is your stamina. So basically, your peak Gs is how many Gs you can sustain without drawing on your stamina reservoir. And then once you go past those peak Gs, especially as you start going faster and faster, as you start getting more and more Gs, then you will start exhausting your stamina more and more. So it will be quicker and quicker to do that. And it does take time, of course, to get your stamina back. So that's what that kind of coming to is that is you getting your stamina back so let's go ahead and, and just kind of add a few points to the uh you know to, to the crew skill here and show exactly how big of a difference just a simple expert crew can make so it is important to bear this in mind in order to actually get to an expert crew i do need to get to skill level 30 so i will still need to boost these up anyways so i'm just going to go ahead and go with the standard things here and also increase the reload speed and the weapons maintenance just that way so we have it so right now we went from a base of 4.5 g's all the way up to 5.4 g's and also with the stamina i went all the way from a base of five seconds to fully come to after black out to 3.75 seconds so it is impressive and i gained two-thirds of a second from time until st uh, total stamina loss which is again very important so let's go ahead and purchase the expert qualification which will further increase it now my total peak g's are 5.9 so I, I increased my g's by a total of 1.4 
which is huge. That is absolutely huge. That's almost one third just by simply going to purchase all the G skill, if you will, and also going for the expert. So from zero to eight points in all of that, I have basically increased it by about one third, which is phenomenal. So that said, let's go ahead and test this out and see exactly how quickly it will take until you're blacked out. But uh, you will notice this difference, I am sure. Okay, we are getting closer to that 1000 kilometer per hour barrier and I will go into a complete turn now. So as you can see, I'm maintaining, look at that. Look at that. I maintained it all the way through. I didn't, I genuinely did not expect that. I thought that would black out or at least come close, but that is how big of a difference it makes. So let's do this a little bit faster. Let's get closer to Mach 1. Okay, let's see if we can knock ourselves out here at 1.05 extreme overload i am really pushing it to the limit and i did it took that much that much more and then i came to far far quicker so that said let's just go ahead and ace this baby out i want to see what this thing is fully aced i am stoked but that was a tremendous improvement from stock to expert with plus of course the uh necessary crew improvements as well that i just did by myself so let's get into it fully aced okay so getting this to ace cost me 2800 golden eagles of course it'll be a lot cheaper the lower br that you are but let's flip it up and 11 10 9 8 and hardly even dark in the screen screen that may have been better than the expert Let's go ahead and put this up to Mach 1.05 and try it there. See if I black out because I do have a 0.3 G higher maximum G load. So it is extremely nice right now. I mean, I am, I think about one a touch more than close to around 40 or 45% better in terms of overall G load than I was before, which is huge because it'll take that much longer oh okay i'm at 1.075 okay let's flip see if we can do this and i'm blacking out but it noticeably took a bit longer wait i'm still in it i'm still in it so i didn't completely black out and i think a lot of that is functionally i mean of course it's a combination of the stamina and the g tolerance but holy cow, this thing can make a total 180 at 1.05 Mach, and still you will not black out, which is just crazy. Let's try this at 1.11, and that'll pretty much end it here. So if you guys want, please, of course, consider liking, commenting, subscribing. I greatly appreciate all that. There we go. It took about 1.1 times the speed of Mach near sea level to effectively black out my pilot. But of course, again, Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Uh, it all means the absolute world to me because, you know, that's what helps me make this video content. And uh, again, if you guys aren't naval players, you can pretty much just transfer everything I said about the ground forces and just transfer that over to naval because more or less they are about the same when it comes to functionality, um, except for, I believe, like survivability, it might be, helps to add to crew. But that's pretty much it. You know, I mean, they're more or less about the same. But either way, again, thank you all so much. And, uh, you know, seriously, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.